Difference between financial econometrics and economic econometrics. Financial data often differ from macroeconomic data in terms of their frequency, accuracy, seasonality, and other properties. Economic econometrics. Small samples problem. In economics, a serious problem is often a lack of data at hand for testing the theory or hypothesis of interest, this is often called a small samples problem. It might be, for example, that data are required on government budget deficits, or population figures, which are measured only on an annual basis. If the methods used to measure these quantities changed a quarter of a century ago, then only at most 25 of these annual observations are usefully available. Measurement error and data revisions. Two other problems that are often encountered in conducting applied econometric work in the arena of economics are those of measurement error and data revisions. These difficulties are simply that the data may be estimated or measured with error and will often be subject to several vintages of subsequent revisions. For example, a researcher may estimate an economic model of the effect on national output of investment in computer technology using a set of published data, only to find that the data for the last two years have been revised substantially in the next, updated publication. Financial econometrics. These issues are usually of less concern in finance. Financial data come in many shapes and forms, but in general the prices and other entities that are recorded are those at which trades actually took place, or which were quoted on the screens of information providers. There exists, of course, the possibility for typos or for the data measurement method to change, for example, owing to stock index rebalancing or rebasing. But in general, the measurement error and revisions problems are far less serious in the financial context. Higher frequencies. Similarly, some sets of financial data are observed at much higher frequencies than macroeconomic data. Asset prices or yields are often available at daily, hourly or minute-by-minute -minute frequencies. Thus, the number of observations available for analysis can potentially be very large, perhaps thousands or even millions, making financial data the envy of macroeconometricians. The implication is that more powerful techniques can often be applied to financial than economic data, and that researchers may also have more confidence in the results. Noisy data. Furthermore, the analysis of financial data also brings with it a number of new problems. While the difficulties associated with handling and processing such a large amount of data are not usually an issue given recent and continuing advances in computer power, financial data often have a number of additional characteristics. For example, financial data are often considered very noisy, which means that it is more difficult to separate underlying trends or patterns from random and uninteresting features. Financial data are also almost always not normally distributed in spite of the fact that most techniques in econometrics assume that they are. High-frequency data often contain additional patterns, which are the result of the way that the market works, or the way that prices are recorded. These features need to be considered in the model building process, even if they are not directly of interest to the researcher. 3. Market microstructure. One of the most rapidly evolving areas of financial application of statistical tools is in the modeling of market microstructure problems. Market microstructure may broadly be defined as the process whereby investors' preferences and desires are translated into financial market transactions. It is evident that microstructure effects are important and represent a key difference between financial and other types of data. These effects can potentially impact on many other areas of finance. For example, market rigidities or frictions can imply that current asset prices do not fully reflect future expected cash flows. Also, investors are likely to require compensation for holding securities that are illiquid, and therefore embody a risk that they will be difficult to sell owing to the relatively high probability of a lack of willing purchasers at the time of desired sale. Measures such as volume or the time between trades are sometimes used as proxies for market liquidity.